50, we turn to former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. I guess I should ask you, are you going to run in 2016 no, if I, I agree uh, with Romney Chris. doesn't I think, win? I think we're all going to be supporting Romney's re-election. Uh, you know, I heard you, Mr. Speaker, uh, this week on television, uh, I think I heard you correctly say that Mitt Romney is whistling past the graveyard unless he does well in these debates. Is it that bad for him? Well, it's all, look, it's always that bad. The, the three great incumbent disasters were the Carter-Ford debates, the Reagan-Carter debates, and then the Clinton-George H.W. Bush debates. And the three times you saw the challenger take on the incumbent and win, the debates really mattered. The places where you saw the incumbent do well, for Reagan versus Mondale, uh, I would argue Carter versus Dole, you know, or, or Bush versus Kerry, the incumbent won. So the, the, I think debates matter psychologically to the country. They're the most viewed single event in the campaign. And I think it's always a burden on the challenger. This isn't, this isn't about Romney, it's about the challenger. The challenger has to make two cases. The incumbent should not be reelected and I would do a better job. It's, it's a two-part. I mean, you first have to make sure people say, yeah, Obama's stagnation is, is unacceptable, but then you got to say, and by the way, this guy will be better. Romney, I, he doesn't have to hit a home run, but Romney has to, has to be at the end of the debate Wednesday night, a clear alternative who is, a, who is considered as a potential president by a majority of the American people in order for his campaign to have a chance to win. Is that another way of saying if he doesn't win these debates, he's not going to be president? Well, no, no challenger is going to become president if they can't stand up to the incumbent president. This, is, this was true for Carter against Ford. It was true, and, and Ford made a mistake and it cost him dearly. It was true of Carter as the incumbent against Reagan, and Reagan stood up to it and Carter w was cost dearly. And frankly, it was true of George H.W. Bush. He had a moment to knock out Bill Clinton. He didn't do it. Clinton was still standing, and he became the president in 92. This debate is going to be about domestic affairs. I want to ask you about something on the foreign policy front, <laughs> uh, because the administration has basically changed its account of what happened in Libya, where our U.S. ambassador was killed. Uh, they said, uh, Susan Rice said on this broadcast last Sunday, after the president of Libya said this was the work of terrorists, she said, no, this was because of a spontaneous demonstration that had to do with that film. Now, they have come around to saying, well, yes, uh, it was a terrorist uh, attack. Is Mitt Romney making enough of this? I haven't heard too much from you him know, on that. Bob, what, what struck me, uh, and I've known the director of national intelligence for years. He's a bright man. He's a competent man. This administration, in effect, is now saying to us, oh, don't blame the, set, the United Nations ambassador, don't blame the White House spokesman, don't blame the president, because our intelligence system failed so decisively. Now, I don't know which worries me more. The idea that the intelligence system took weeks to figure out the obvious, although we are told that, in fact, they had information the day before the attack, uh, because the... The video that went out from Al Qaeda asking that, that the ambassador, or that somebody be killed on, on 9/11, uh, was it was a day earlier. So I don't know whether I feel more comfortable knowing that the administration was incompetent and lied to us, or I feel more comfortable knowing that the, the intelligence community was totally out of touch. My hunch is the intelligence community was not out of touch. The ambassador's own diary apparently indicates that he was worried about being targeted for death. You have to ask yourself, there should be, the, the Congress will be holding hearings right now. How could an ambassador be in Benghazi, the, the hotbed of anti-American sentiment in Libya? How could he be there on 9-11 with no security? I mean, this whole, this entire incident makes no sense. And yes, I think, I think Romney should be demanding that the president tell the American people the truth. Do you think, uh, getting back to the campaign, do you think that Mitt Romney's got to move a little bit more toward the center here as we come toward the uh, election? No, I think Mitt Romney has to move to clarity in drawing the contrast between the two futures. There is a Obama stagnation future. We, we had in, information this last week that we're drifting into another recession, which to go into a recession off of 8% unemployment could easily mean you end up at 12 or 13 percent unemployment. And yet all sorts of indicators, David Malpass wrote a very compelling economics analysis this week that we're drifting into a, a, another recession because of Obama. There has to be a contrast between a Romney recovery and an Obama stagnation. And frankly, it's not right or left. It, it's, it's common sense getting the country back to work, having an American energy policy. North Dakota has 2.7 percent unemployment. The governor of North Dakota has a billion dollar uh, rainy day fund and they've had three tax cuts in a row. Now, 
Romney should be focusing on that kind of big choice. And, and it's not really right or left so much as it is common sense and it works versus uh, fuzzy ideas that haven't worked. Well, they've also covered oil out there, so but we'll get back to that. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to ask you to stick around for our okay. roundtable in a little bit. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back in one minute with a little analysis of this.